Hi everybody and welcome back to the Pro Builder how to make the E1 M1 level from Doom tutorial series. In this video we'll be taking a look at how to add in the doors to your level. So we have several areas that need a door to go up and down obviously, pretty simple in order to let the player through or block them off if there was a key code or anything like that. So we'll add these in a little bit later. For now we're going to go to a completely clean scene and build it up there just to keep it a little simpler uh, while going to some of the more complex aspects of this. So I'll go ahead and create a brand new scene. And I'll turn back on the grid in this case, the Unity grid. And let's start by creating just some basic geometry to work with here. So I'm going to create a basic Pro Builder cube and then start moving around to uh, create a floor. I'll set my snap a bit higher too so it's a little simpler. There's a floor and then let's create a frame for the door. Let's say we want it here. And I'll just move this over. Something like such, and we have the frame. Could even get a little more uh, special with it if we want, and just go ahead and toss some loops through. And then maybe extrude these. A lesser amount. Just have something a little more visually interesting here. Okay, so we have a door frame. Let's create a quick door. Same thing here. Okay, so door and door frame. We're ready to script this up and make it work. Uh, in this case, just because I've already started using the Ultimate FPS kit and also because it's just awesome to use, uh, we'll be making the door work with that system, but there's of course lots of other methods you could use for the actual scripting and, and movement and such. This is just what, we, uh, what we'll use in this particular tutorial. The first thing to check on your door is that it is on the layer movable object, and this is just for the ultimate FPS camera scripting again, and you want to make sure that movable object Number one is spelled exactly like this, and also on user layer number 28. That's important. So set the layer of your door to movable object. And then the next thing you need to do is make sure the collider on the door is convex. So go ahead and set that in the checkbox. And then set the pivot to a good corner position. In this case it already is, but if you need to change it, you can go into the geometry editing select any point that you'd want the, ver uh, the pivot to be on or the center of any points and click the set pivot button. It's important to set the pivot beforehand because we need to know where that is for setting up the waypoints for the door movement. Last on the door we'll need to make sure this is set as a mover type so just hit M on your keyboard and as a little pop-up confirms this is now a mover. Basically this makes the Pro Builder object a dynamic type so it's not going to be static. This allows it to move in the in the level and also won't be light mapped of course since it's now dynamic. Then we want to create a couple empty game objects starting with one to be a parent for the uh, top and bottom locations. So I'll go game object, create empty, and then I just want to snap this to the exact same corner that the uh, the pivot for the door is at. And this is another reason it's handy to place the um, the pivot right at a corner versus somewhere in, in the center. It's easier to snap it by holding down the V key and you can snap to any uh, vertice just like that. If you need to make sure it's right on and the, uh, the pivot isn't at a corner, you can drag that game object onto the door. In this case I have a couple items here in the hierarchy. Let's go ahead and rename these so they're easier in the future. I'll call this PBO underscore door, Pro Builder object door. And this new game object I'm going to call the waypoint parent. And I'll make that a child of the door object. And just make sure the position 
x, y, and z, and also the rotation x, y, and z are at zero. This is also very important. You need to make sure the rotation is exactly the same, otherwise your door is going to flip in random directions, or seemingly random anyway, uh, if the waypoint parent and the waypoints themselves are not at the same rotation as the door. So once that's in there, set 0, 0, 0, and then we can drag it back out. And now, even if the position, etc., shows differently, we know it's exactly at the same uh, point as the pivot on the door. Next, we'll create the actual waypoints for the top and bottom positions. So just go ahead and duplicate the waypoint parent twice, and then rename each of those. So we'll have WP1 and WP2. Make sure WP1 is at the very bottom where the door starts and WP2 wherever you want the door to end. We probably don't want it to go all the way up because then if we look at it here, that face will conflict with the top. You can kind of see the Z fighting going on there. Uh, might be hard in the video to see that. So we probably want the door to end right about there. Let's bring the door back down. So I'll place WP2 right there just a quarter meter below. Then we can take each of these and drag and drop them into the waypoint parent, so they're children of the waypoint parent. Once again on this, in case you've made any changes with the rotation, make sure the rotation on these waypoints uh, is exactly the same as the waypoint parent, although of course don't change the position since one of these is going to be different for the top position. Now we need to set the door to work with Ultimate FPS Camera. So select the door, and then we're going to add a component. In this case, it is the VP underscore moving platform. If you start searching, it should come up pretty quickly. And then we have a couple things to set in here. First of all, under path, we want to drag in the waypoint parent as the waypoints. And you can click on generate gizmos if you like. Uh, Ultimate FPS camera will generate its own special looking gizmos. Doesn't really matter to me, but uh, give it a try if you like. For the type of movement, we'll want to set that to target. If we leave it on ping pong, it'll simply bounce up and down and up and down, which in this case is not what we want. If this is a door that's going to be uh, activated by a click or an elevator to be stepped on and then move, we want it to be set to target. This is essentially user um, activatable, so set that to target. And then we want to set auto start target to off. This just makes sure it won't automatically start moving. It needs to be activated by the user for the first movement. That's it for the path items under movement. I'm going to change a couple things here. These are really just tweaks. You'd have to see what works well for you, but I'll set the speed to 0.5, make it a little bit faster, and the interpolation mode to ease out. Uh, definitely mess around with these and see what works best for your particular door or elevator, whatever it might be, but those are what I'd like to use here. Next, we'll add on the switch for the door, and a lot of times you would have a separate switch, something like, let's see if I create a quick little item here that might be a switch off to the side that had a panel or something and we'll create one just so we have it here so perhaps this is a button that the player can press to open the door and that would work just fine except in the case of Doom's door for the for the E1 N1 uh, E1 M1 map that we're creating. The switch is the door itself. So you run up to the door, you press E, and the door just opens. So we'll just set it up on the door. So to do that, select the door, and then scroll down, click Add Component again, and we want to do a VP underscore platform switch. And once again, that should come up pretty quickly while you're searching for it. Add that on, and then we have a couple things to edit on that. First of all, the interact distance. I like to have it about two for two meters, so the player can activate the door from a bit of a distance if they're running at it quite quickly. Uh, that way they don't slam into it, hit E, wait for it to open while they're fragged from behind or something like that. Uh, set that to whatever distance works for your particular game. Uh, also an interactive crosshair, so this is what's going to show up when the player centers their crosshair over the door or the switch, and Ultimate FPS has a nice little interact switch crosshair, we'll just use that. And lastly we need to assign the actual platform. So the platform is what is going to move, naturally that's the door itself here. At this point we can go ahead and give this uh, our door a quick test, so I'm going to go ahead and drop in the Ultimate FPS player prefab. 
Make sure it's the advanced player. And hit play. Okay, so now as we walk up, we have that new interaction icon. No, it's just a crosshair over here. And then once we're there and I can hit F and the door opens up. I can hit F again and it closes. So there you have it, creating a door using ProBuilder to create the mesh and the geometry and then Ultimate FPS to make it work. This is a really nice handy system. Once again, there's lots of other options. Uh, I'd especially like to make a quick shout out to Doors Galore, which is a really nice uh, setup created um, by Modulus on the Asset Store in case you need a lot of options for doors and textures and even more animations. But for a basic uh, setup that works perfectly with Ultimate FPS Camera, this is a great way to go, at least to, to get started. One final task here would be to make this into a prefab so I can actually take what I've created right here and drop it right into the uh, the actual E1 M1 level. So we want to make this all compiled into one single prefab. We have the waypoint parent and the PBO door. We don't really need the frame and the, uh, the button over here and the box uh, or the floor that is. So we just need the door and the waypoint parent. I'll just create an empty game object. And once again, I'm going to place it right at the door's pivot point just to make sure everything is lined up correctly. I'll call this the door prefab. And this one happens to be five wide by three tall and one meter tall. So I'll mark that into the prefab. Then I'll take the door and the waypoint parent and drag and drop it into there. So that's set and we can make a prefab of that. I'll just drag and drop it right into the prefabs folder. And now we can move into the actual E1 M1 scene and set up the doors and give it a quick play test. Okay, back in the actual E1 M1 scene, there's a couple locations where we need to add in the doors. First is the very first door you come across here. I already have a special outline set up for the door here. If I move the actual door up and out of the way, you'll see that the door fits right into it. So I'm just going to replace the actual door piece with the new door that we just prefabbed. I will delete that and then find the door in the prefabs and drag and drop it in and put it into place. So this door, just realized that I actually created it a bit too large to fit. Luckily with ProBuilder, that's not a problem at all. I'll simply select the door, enter the edit mode, and move it to fit. Looks like I'll need to set my snap slightly different and also turn it on. There we go. Okay. So, door is set up properly. Now I can just go ahead and copy this over to each of the other door locations. I'm actually going to name this door so I actually know which one it is. So this is, let's say, door one. And I'll just control D and make a copy of it. Make sure you're making a copy from the very top of the hierarchy, not of the uh, parts inside of it. And the second door would be the secret over here. Spoiler alert, I guess, if you haven't already played Doom, there is a secret over here. And I'll drop that in, oops, right where it ought to be. Now this door is a little bit special in that it's not sized the same as the other one, so this probably shouldn't have actually been a prefab in this case, but that's all right. Once again, I'll just edit this so it fits. I'm going to delete the old one here. Make sure it has the same geometry to match. And then I'll need to make a different prefab of that since it's much different. And Dropbox is a pain sometimes. Okay, so let's call that door large, very large. So there's our door. Put that all the way closed. And we need another over here. I'll grab the regular size door. Where did that go? Move it over. This one needs to be rotated.
drop it into place there. And we have a final door right over here. This one again needs to be edited quite a bit. No problem. We'll set it up and edit it to match. Very quick and simple, even when things don't start out perfectly. Again, one of the great parts of using Pro Builder, you can just keep on editing however you need. And let's go ahead and name this door final. And this as well needs its own prefab since it's very small. That's also just for the sake of organization. Rename the second door. There it is. Right. Yep. To be door two, so you can keep that in mind. Of course, you'll also want to delete the old doors there. With that set, let's take a quick play and see how this actually works. Run on over there. So as I come up to it, oops, wrong button, F in the case of Ultimate FPS will automatically use items. So just like that, I can open and close the door, move along to the next. Secret door somewhere in here. There it is. And this one. And the last. Looks like this last one, and I actually forgot to set the height of it. So, little things like that. Make sure you check with your doors before you call them finished and uh, ship the game or anything. So, just for a last bit of practice, let's go in and fix that door which had the waypoints off. I'll select the door and go to its waypoints. Waypoint 1 is where it ought to be. Waypoint 2 is much too high. So we'll just move that down so it's just a little bit below the uh, the actual door top there. And that should work just fine. So that's all there is to building and setting up a door using ProBuilder and Ultimate FPS camera. Uh, make sure you check out all the other awesome tutorials we have coming for this, uh, this map making of the iconic E1M1 Doom level. Lots more to go here, and uh, we'll see you in those future tutorials. Thanks.